Welcome back to the Lorden Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here today in this very special episode. A few weeks ago, we profiled the disappearance of John Shadden out of Midland, Texas. If you haven't seen that video yet, please pause this one, check the description box down below and click that link, then come back and see this one. Today, we're gonna to be joined by John's daughter, Chelsea, to learn much more about her father's disappearance. Chelsea, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. Um, just to kind of lay out the structure of the family. Um, so John had Chelsea uh, with a different woman before he got married to Stephanie. Stephanie had one child from a previous relationship as well. Uh, his name's Lane. And then they got married, and they had two more children, and that would be Cade and Ian. So... Um, can you start just by telling us a little bit about your dad? Like I, I heard a couple hobbies, like he was into fishing, maybe into hunting a little bit. What do you remember about your father and what he liked to do? Um, my dad was into a lot of things, especially outdoorsy stuff. Um, when I was a little kid, he would take me to the bull riding arena. Um, he used to ride bulls. Wow. Um, he and I worked out in the yard together. We planted gardens. Um, I know he was really into working out for a time. He was into taking care of himself. Um, and he was a, a very good golfer as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, what was your favorite memory with your father? Um, my favorite memory would have to be he and I sh shared a love for like old nineties music and we would get in his car and he would pick me up and we would usually go for a movie and some lunch. And we would literally just like jam out in his truck. He had like a, a big speaker system in his truck yeah. and we would just dance around in the car. And it was, I just thought it was like the most fun ever. <laughs> what song in particular? Is there one that's really um, the Tootsie Roll song? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that one. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so at the time that your father goes missing, and by the way, I'm really sorry that you've had to have this in your life and that you're dealing with this so many years later. Um, he goes missing you're not living at the at the house he's living at at that time right can you tell us what the situation was around that um so i lived with my mom okay. and my brother uh, my my half brother um between her and my stepdad um and then my dad lived across town in midland with stephanie lane kate and ian okay and how often would you get over there would you go s weekends or i mean I, I was in high school so okay. uh, not all, probably not as much as I should. Um, probably once or twice a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think all of us kind of went through that in high school as well. Yeah. Our time started becoming really important for us. And right. Yeah. yeah I gotcha. I was in a lot of activities in high school. And so, um, I, you know, I'm sure my mom was wanting to see more of me too, but yeah, <laughs> you know right. how it is. Teenagers. Right. Absolutely. Um, and can you just give us a little insight into how's your relationship with Stephanie through, through this period before the disappearance? Before the disappearance? Yeah. Um, it was fine. Uh, she always treated me like family whenever I was around. Um, she always called me her daughter. She always told me that, you know, she loved and cared about me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's sometimes rough with, um, you know, when, when we have step parents all of a sudden and it's not always the easiest situation, but, um, right. she had been, I guess, part of your life for about four years, right? Around that. Yes. Time? Okay. All right. Um, 
So do you have any insight in terms of what's going on in their relationship leading up to the disappearance? Because I know that, like I mentioned in the first thing, the articles are saying that, oh, he was just on a trip, on a weekend trip. But I was hearing from family, no, he wasn't living at the house anymore. Can you give us some more insight? So she had told me, so the weekend before his disappearance, um, I was actually at my mom's family's family reunion. Um, and he and I, I was about to turn 16. He and I were going to go looking for a new car. He told me, oh yeah, I'll buy you a new car for when you turn 16. Yeah. Um, and that was the last time I had talked to him. Well, then I got back and I called and I spoke with Stephanie and she said, oh, you need to come over. So I came over to the house and she said, um, your dad's not here. Uh, I haven't heard from him. Um, but I, he hasn't been really staying here. He, I told him that, um, I wanted to get a divorce. Okay. So I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, I have to work tonight. Can you stay the night here with the boys? And I said, oh yeah, sure. So I actually stayed two nights. Um, that was Saturday and Sunday. Well, then Monday rolled around and my dad didn't show up for work. Right. And so that had been, I guess it's kind of hard to remember. It's been so long ago. Um, that had been, I think, within the 24 hours of her not hearing from him because he was supposed to be back on Sunday because he knew that she had to work. Um, and someone needed to be there to take care of boys. That's right. They had kind of like opposite working hours, right? She would work yes. nights. He would work during she, the days. Yeah. She worked at the hospital at night as a respiratory therapist and he worked during the days. But just to set it up right. So she's talking about we're getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. He is, is he spending some days out at the trailer and then just coming to watch the kids and then basically going he, back? That's something that I don't know. Okay. okay. From what he had from what I was thinking and from what I was believing is that he was still at the house up until that weekend that she told him that she wanted the divorce. And that's why she needed me to come over and stay at the house was because he had went out of town. She said he had gone out of town to like clear his head. Okay. Okay. That, um, if that makes sense. I mean, you know, uh, there's with these cases. <laughs> that's what, that's yeah. what I was told. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just to let everyone know, it does sound like we have another uh, interview going on in the background. And that would be <laughs> Chelsea's child, uh, John's grandchild. Is that John's first grandchild? Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, would you mind sharing? Yeah, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Oh, their she name. She is um, 11 months old. Her name is Scarlet Rose. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you guys might hear Scarlet Rose in the background. That's just a bonus to to this interview. Um, okay, so we've set up kind of what happens through the weekend. Um, I had a couple questions about the logistics of the area, and I don't know if you're going to be able to help us with this or not. But um, I know he was caught on, I think, on footage. And possibly there was also a sighting of him at a store where he was buying some beer and some chew, I think. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if that was the Wildcat Marina store? I don't know. Um, okay. I, I have never been actually, I've never been out there. That trailer was fairly new, something new that they had gotten. And I had not ever been out there yet. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, all right. So you find out that he's missing on the following Monday, essentially? Mm -hmm. Essentially. Uh, okay. Were you still at the house at that point? I was. Okay. And who was it? Stephanie that told you? Yes. So Stephanie told me um, he didn't come to work. He didn't go to work, which was not like my dad. He had like a very good work ethic. That was one thing he was known for was he's always going to show up to work. Um so we had a police officer, Stephanie called a police officer, and I remember the police officer sitting in the kitchen at the kitchen table with Stephanie. Okay. Okay. Do you know if that was like, was that in the middle of the day? Do you remember? Or was that? It was late? in the evening. It was early okay. evening. Okay. Because I would imagine there's going to be a little bit of time between, you know, the workday starts, maybe his boss right. and some coworkers notice he's not there. They reach out to her. Like, there's got to be some time that passes there. Right. I think it was... I want to say it was probably around eight o'clock at night because it was summertime. So 
the sun was just setting. I, okay. I remember that. Okay. Um, so we did have another family member that sent in an article that um, I didn't bump into during my research, but it was from 2017. And it was from the West Texas Weekly News on Facebook. They interviewed several people, including John's boss, Mike St. John. And when they asked him if he thought John was still alive, he kind of had an interesting response. He said, quote, at first, no, I felt he would carry out the threat he had made to his wife to end his life. As time went on, I felt he had gone off somewhere and just started over. As far as being well, I hope he got some help and is doing fine. Did you know that there was any threat made by your father to end his life? No. Okay. Uh, do you know if, if there was a note or anything left behind in the trailer? So while they were out there searching, there was something alluded to some sort of note, but it had been burned. And that was kind of the last I had ever heard of it. Like, okay. It's all very strange. Yeah. Um, apparently there was some note or maybe there wasn't. Okay. I don't know. I wish that I had been old enough to go out there and see for myself. But I was talking to my mom about this the other day and she was like, yeah, there was a note. They had found some sort of burnt note that was supposedly a suicide note. But yeah, I, I, I've, I've gone back through, I found one tiny mention in one article that just says something about a note, but it kind of had this differentiator in it. Like it wasn't necessarily a suicide note. Like it was, it was just a note about him possibly being depressed or, or going through something. It wasn't. I mean, if that was the case, I mean, that would be totally something that would be, I would feel like... I think he probably was depressed. I don't know if yeah. you have any like background on his childhood and things like that. But I mean, he had things, some traumas that he needed to probably heal and that were probably still haunting him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I, I've kind of heard a little bit. Um, I know that the alcohol was a very strong thing with his parents in particular and mm -hmm. a, a challenge for both of them as well. So yeah, I'm sure that brought a lot of challenges. Um, do you know if your father had a gun? I kind of asked other family members and we got split information on it. So I know he had guns. Okay. I mean, I feel like every middle-aged man in Texas has guns, especially sure. if you go hunting and things like that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, so yes, I know he had guns. I, he had a gun safe. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any guns that went missing around all this? I think... I almost want to say that the cops had asked Stephanie that, and I think she said no. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the flip side of that coin, that's kind of one thought chain that this article goes down. Uh, they also interviewed Stephanie, and mm -hmm. she said that she was contacted somewhere around 2012 with a pretty interesting question. Here's her quote. The Texas Rangers contacted me asking if I knew John had been checking into flights out of Midland a couple weeks before he went missing, and if he had a credit card I didn't know about. Of course, I had no idea. I strongly feel like he is very much alive. John had a, ter a terrible childhood and always wanted to be somebody different. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, it sounds like, I mean, if they're saying he was checking into flights. I don't know. That could have been off the computer. We talked about the computer being used. So I have heard that. And I and that's why I so badly want to get this computer because I've heard these things from the Texas Rangers and I've heard these stories and I'm like, so why is nobody looking at the computer? Why is this not something that's looked into more? Why is this just keep being put off all the time? Every time I call you guys to let me have the computer you just blow me off like uh, it's let, just kind of like everybody's just like whatever please tell us a little bit about what how that communication has gone so you've reached out to the investigators on this yourself oh yeah several times um the last time i spoke with them was about three years ago 
Sorry. That's okay. Uh, I spoke with them three years ago, and they told me that since I was, um, let me fix this. Sure. Since I was um, my dad's oldest child mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, his closest living relative that they could send it to me. Okay. They were going to send me the computer, his driver's license, um, some of his other personal belongings that they had. And all this time went by, they still haven't sent it. So after I saw this video last week, I went ahead and made a call to Coke County. Um, They are always very nice. Um, She said there's a new ranger in charge, which that seems to always happen. There's always a new ranger. Yeah. Um, She said she would get in touch with him and that he would be getting in touch with me by this Tuesday, which I haven't heard from him. Um, I called her the following day after I first spoke with her last week and said, Hey, I haven't gotten an email from you or him. Um, Just wanted to check in. She said, yeah, I um, talked with him. I kind of gave him a background on everything um, that happened over the years and who you were and what you were wanting. And he's supposed to get with you on Tuesday. Well, I haven't heard from him. Okay. Okay. Um, It's Wednesday. And so I'm planning on calling on Thursday, but. Yeah. um, You know, something you might want to add to the list of conversation points. I mean, I would say focus on getting the computer first because Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I was doing the original coverage, I'm like, I want to see that computer. I would go right right into the internet search history and I'd be looking, especially because we had that story that he had spent some time on the computer. What was he searching on in those six hours? That could be very insightful. Um, But outside of that, you might also want to start opening the conversation about, hey, uh, I'm hearing from a family member there might be a note. Um, you know, this this YouTuber's telling me he bumped into an article that mentions a note as well. Is there a note? And if there is, can you guys tell me what's in it? Right. You know, um, that, that could be helpful in terms of giving you some understanding about what's going on around this too. So are there any other developments or things that you've been talking about when you've reached out to the Texas Rangers or Coke County about this case in particular? Are there any questions that you're kind of sitting with? Like, Oh, I really need to ask them this. Um, I, I think my biggest question to them is, you know, why are you avoiding this? Why are you avoiding me? Um, his family, you know, all we, we're just wanting some closure or something and you can't even give us, why can't you give us the decency to just help us? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the main question that I have. Why, why are you blowing us off? (laughs) Right. Right. And no one else is a point of contact with them, right? Like they don't. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a good question because you're looking at a situation where we're many years down the road. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Stephanie was probably a main point of contact or really bothering them a whole lot after that initial year, at least based on what I'm seeing with the articles. Yeah. Um, why not give just a little attention and, and try to help you guys understand this? That's why I think the having the computer and understanding that note could just be very helpful in terms of your process of trying to come to grips with this. And honestly, who's going to know, like if, if you would give me that, that note and I would look at it, I might make one assumption and go, Oh, well, yeah, no, no, no. He definitely ran off or he did this or he did that. Mm -hmm. I don't know the guy like getting, getting that note in, or at least the text that's written, even if it's a copy of it, but getting that into the hands of someone that actually knows him, loves him, knows how he would speak, you know, knows his emotional arcs that he would go through. That could Mm -hmm. be a whole different piece of insight. So yeah, I'm really, really hoping that, that you can get that somehow that they, well, I I plan on being a squeaky wheel. Um, this throughout, you know, three years ago, I was, in a different place in my life. And I was like, you know, I'm just really going to try really hard at doing this. And then we had some unfortunate events happen, um, in our family. And, you know, that kind of put up that kind of put a pause on things. And then, uh, COVID happened and, uh, yeah. I had my baby and 
it's just kind of uh, been put on hold, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, then, it's like life. I said, I saw the video and it kind of like relit a fire under me. And I'm like, oh yeah. Like, why did they were supposed to send me that a long time ago. Why haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you happen to see the video I released today with the detective? I did not. It's funny you say that. Cause he literally said, I asked him like, what's, what's the number one tip for families that have missing persons cases. Mm -hmm. And he literally said to be the squeaky wheel. Like uh, you have to be, uh, you're yeah. going to be the one that gets the most attention because they're constantly reshuffling duties. Mm -hmm. Um, an area like Coke County, they probably don't have a, a dedicated missing persons investigator. They've got someone that's been as assigned that case, but they're also dealing with everything else that's going on. Um, yeah, it's it's really, you have to kind of keep nudging those things to get that attention, but also figuring out a good method of communication with them. Mm -hmm. And one really good point, uh, his name's Detective Turner. One really good point he brought up is, don't be afraid to have a conversation with them about that communication. Just like saying, hey, look, I really want to be able to check in once a month. Is that too much? Right. Like, what's more reasonable for you? How can we make this work in a way where I feel like we're maintaining contact and we're, we're a good avenue of information for each other back and forth? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for open communication. Um, it's just a matter of them actually even responding to me, yeah. um, you know, uh, so I'm going to call them tomorrow and yeah, I, and, I'm, and I understand they're busy and it's a 15 year old case. So I, I understand that I'm not at the top of the list. Um, but you're on the list. Yes, but I am on the list and yeah. I feel like we deserve that, and, you know, some, re that respect that they would give anybody else. Absolutely. Um, there's also been a theme uh, in terms of me speaking to other members of the family, and even you were kind of touching on it with in terms of some you know tragedies that happen in the family, and focus gets pulled here or there. But mm -hmm. this is a family that's kind of pretty fractured, right? Like, mm -hmm. how's your relationship with Stephanie at this point? When's the last time you spoke to her? Um, my relationship with Stephanie is non-existent. Um, she. When my brother passed away, she wasn't even the one to tell me. Uh, his cousin that I'm not even related to is the one who got in touch with me um, and let me know what happened. Um, she's the one who kept in constant communication with me about when the funeral was. She invited me to come sit with them at the funeral, which I declined. I sat with my mother and my grandmother um, just because I didn't feel like that was something I needed to do with Stephanie. Um, I, I didn't feel like I would be welcomed in that situation. Um, it's I such had, a bizarre turn to go from like, I mean, the weekend of the disappearance, you describe, you know, Stephanie reaching out to you, you know, you're her daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. She needs help watching the kids that weekend. You're the first one she calls. You stay for two days, despite the fact that you're this, you know, young teenager starting to learn <laughs> about all the mm -hmm. stuff you want to do with your weekends. Yeah. Um, but then it just... It just stops after that like the relationship just breaks pretty much um wow. it, it's very it's been very strange you know there were a few times um when the boys were still young that, that she brought her, them over for christmas to my mom's house and we we did get them gifts but any other time that we would reach out or i would reach out it was like radio silence. Um, I would even ask her like, Hey, have you heard from the Rangers? I, I would try to talk to her about it. She would just blow me off. Um, I would ask her, <laughs> I asked her so many times for, you know, the photos of me and my dad from when I was little, just something like some sort of memento to have of my dad. Cause I had nothing. Um, she would tell me all the time, she doesn't know where those are. She doesn't have those. I'm like, well, what did you do with them? Because it's not like he came in and got them. Right. Um, she wouldn't, she just wouldn't have anything to do with me. Um, and then after my brother passed away, his cousin was very sweet and she sent me a bunch of things that my little brother had actually kept um, that 
were from my dad. It was pictures of me as a baby. It was pictures of him. It was pictures of my dad. It was pictures of um, my dad's mom when she was a young girl. Um, he had that all that my brother had kept um, because he was always trying to learn more about our family. And I, I'm from what I'm assuming or can only assume, Stephanie just didn't want to have any part of that. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, there's already so much pain that's going on around this disappearance. And then of course, with your brother passing and everything, it, it, I, I know that families respond in different ways. Some would rally together or pull together around that. Um, but in this case, it's just like everyone is grieving in their own way and kind of going off in their own direction. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Of course, um, back to the conversation about your father's case, another possibility and one that isn't discussed a whole lot, despite the fact that we've seen this outcome in several cases, particularly in uh, that type of area where it might be rugged, some type of accidental disappearance. You know, We have him leaving all of his stuff seemingly in the trailer at, at home. Is it possible that he just went out for a walk or a hike and then something tragic happened? Right. Um, what does your heart tell you, Chelsea, in terms of the most probable outcome? How do you feel? About I don't. It? I don't think that my dad is dead. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> um, I, I've had like so many thoughts, and sometimes it was easier for me to deal with thinking, okay, yeah, maybe he is dead, and something tragic happened or he did take his own life. And that was just a little bit of, I guess, a way to, to feel some closure. Um, but in my heart of hearts, I don't think that he's dead. Um, I don't know if he just left um, or if he was in some kind of trouble that we didn't know about. I don't know. Um, I just, I don't think that he is gone forever. Well, <laughs> I don't. And, and obviously you're part of the club. I mean, this quote we have from Stephanie, she doesn't think that that's the outcome. Uh, his boss saying, you know, I think there's a chance that, that he took off. The other family I spoke to, that was a constant possibility as well, just because they were saying your father was known to squirrel away money. Like as soon as he started making it, like he was just the biggest saver that they had ever seen. Right. Uh, um, so yeah, you're, you're, you're certainly not alone in that um yeah. if he is alive what would you want him to hear from you i think if he is alive and if he was to see this i would just i want him to know that i, I want him to know what pain he's caused our family if he has decided to go and, and i want to know why he just left us and why he did that to his children if he did just decide to leave what was so bad to make him want to leave um yeah yeah and if he does see that happen to see this i want him to know that i, I forgive him if he is still alive and left um and i i wish he could see you know um his grandchild and that I've been a successful human since all of this has happened. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot that you're missing out of in terms of not having your dad around to help you recognize and, and celebrate those successes. And yeah. obviously Scarlet Rose is a big one of those. Um, yeah. Chelsea, thank you so much for being this open, this honest with us, sharing this time with us. Um, I really appreciate getting a little more insight uh, into your father and learning about you and the family. And I'm just, I'm hopeful that doing this is going to help progress this case. Honestly, it lights my heart up a little bit to know that just from putting that video out previously, all of a sudden you're, you're kind of back on the horse with uh, reaching out to investigators and moving things forward. So uh, I think that's certainly going to be effective in helping this case. So I just wanted to say thank you. Anything else you want to say to the audience before we end here today? Um, no, just I, I appreciate uh, being able to finally 
tell my side of things. I, I feel like because I was a child back then, nobody really wanted to hear, you know, from a, a child. And now that I'm an adult, I, I can finally uh, speak my truth on it. Absolutely. And quite honestly, I feel like I'm talking to the best chance this case has of, of moving forward at this point. So uh, please keep up that work and know I'm here. If there's anything I can help with, you need insight or have questions, anything I can help with at all, please, please reach out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Sit tight. I'll be right back with you. That is it for today's episode. Once again, I have to ask you guys, please help us share this information in Texas. We want to get all eyes, ears, and hearts open and looking for John. And now we've got not just Chelsea, but another very big reason, John's grandchild. Also, she's going to wonder where, where my grandpa is. Thank you guys so much for your help. Take care, and we'll see you back here on the Lord and Arts Channel.